Hey, it's Mr. Luneski here with Unit 10, Section 4, Segment Lengths. We've been talking a lot about angles with circles, talking about central angles, inscribed angles. Now we're actually going to talk about the lengths of uh, different segments that go on inside circles, all the different chords and things we've been looking at. So, let's get going here. Um, so we're going to be looking at sort of two different, uh, or three different, excuse me, scenarios with the different lines. Uh, the different lines we've talked about with circles, or uh, segments we've talked about with circles, are chords, tangents, and secants. So we're going to sort of see how, when those things interact with each other, how we can uh, solve some problems with them. Um, all right, so the first one is if we have a scenario where we have two chords. So um, if two chords uh, intersect inside of a circle, um, then to solve for the measurements of the chord. So last video we talked about how we can talk about the arc lengths. We're not talking about the arc lengths and the angles anymore. We're actually talking about the measurements of the chords themselves. Um, so for this particular example, I could say that A times B is equal to C times D. Uh, in other words, what I've done is, if you notice, this is one chord here. But as the two chords intersect, it breaks each chord up into two parts. So this chord got broken up into part A and part B. Um, just as this chord here uh, is getting broken up into part C and part D. So essentially what I'm doing to uh, solve for a problem similar with this stuff, um, I'm taking the part times the part, and that's going to equal the part times the part. Uh, so each chord, again, gets broken up into two parts, and I'm essentially just finding the product of the parts of the chords. Um, might not make much sense now, but let's take a look at an example and see what that looks like. Um, so we have our two chords here. They're intersecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the parts of this chord here and multiply them together, uh, and the parts of this chord here and multiply those together and set it equal to each other. So let's start with this chord here. So the parts of this chord are 9 times x, and we're going to solve for x here. Uh, and we're going to set that equal to the parts of this chord, which would be 3 times 6. Um, and now we just solve for x. Simple algebra problem. Uh, so we have 9x is equal to 18. Divide both sides by 9, and we get x is equal to 2. Um, so now that was a pretty basic easy problem. Let's take a look at a little bit more of a challenging one. Uh, if I have a situation like this where instead of having numbers, we just have expressions. Um, so what I'm going to do for this one is uh, I'll start us off on this chord. It really doesn't matter the order that you go in. Uh, so I'll say x times x plus 4. <clears throat> and that's going to equal the product of these parts of the chord. So that would be x plus 2 and x plus 1. So hopefully this uh, was something that we discussed. I know I discussed it in my class. Hopefully you discussed it in your class. Um, we're now going to be distributing this x here. x times x is x squared. And x times 4 gives me 4x. And then this situation here we talked about in class, this is multiplying binomials together. Uh, that's when we're doing that sort of extended uh, distributive property. The x gets distributed to the x and the 1, and then the 2 gets distributed to the x and the 1. And we sort of put all of that together. Um, so x times x gives me x squared. x times 1 is 1x. If you want to write the 1, cool. If not, no big deal. Um, 2 times x gives me 2x. And then 2 times 1 gives me 2. Ah, I'm running out of room. All right, so now we have everything together. And now it's just let's put it all together, simplify, and solve for x. Um, so I'm going to get my x squared terms together. And luckily, here, when I subtract x squared from both sides, those cancel out. Um, 1x plus 2x simplifies to 3x. So I essentially have 4x equals 3x plus 2. So subtract 3x from both sides. Uh, that gives me x is equal to 2. So notice here the problem is asking us what's ml and jk. So we have to remember that x is equal to 2. Uh, so now we're going to substitute that stuff in to solve for uh, the different lengths of the chords. So if I substitute 2 in for here, that would be 2. 
2 plus 4 is 6, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So the length of chord ML is 7, and the length of chord KJ is equal to 8. So one thing I want to point out here is that the chords themselves, the entire chords, are not equal to each other. But the product of the pieces of the chords are equal to each other. Because 4 times 3 equals 12, and 2 times 6 equals 12. But notice, 7 and 8, they're different lengths. But their parts, the product of their parts, equal each other. Okay, uh, so this example here is exactly like example B. We'd like you to try this one out on your own. So we'll go over that in class. Uh, next situation is what happens if I have two secant lines? Um, what happens there? So if we are given two secants, <clears throat> and they share the same endpoint outside of a circle, uh, so then what can we do here? So for this one, notice we have the two chords, or the two lines, I guess, that are still being broken up into two pieces. So now we have an inside piece and we have an outside piece. Uh, we have inside and outside. Uh, so for this one, we're going to do A times A plus B, and then that's going to equal C times C plus D. Uh, and essentially, if you kind of look at what we did, we did A times A plus B. So in terms of words, how can we kind of simplify that and sum that up? What we're actually doing is we're taking the outside part times the whole thing. So A plus B is this whole line, A plus B. Whereas A is just the part that's hanging outside of the circle. So that's sort of what we're doing in words here. So again, it's outside part um, times the whole. And that's C is the outside part, and C plus D is the whole thing. Uh, so here's an example here of what we th would do for a situation like that. Um, so find the value of X. So again, order not really that important, but I'll start with this piece, this secant right here. So the outside part is 10 times the whole thing. So the whole thing, it's so tempting to say 10 times x, but you have to remember that we're adding. We're adding these pieces together. So it's 10 times 10 plus x. Um, and that is going to equal 9 times 9 plus 11. So we're adding here. So I'll actually just write that out, 9 plus 11. Um, and now we're just going to simplify and solve and solve for x. Um, so when I distribute the 10 here, I get 100 plus 10x is equal to, you don't have to distribute. Please don't distribute here. Um, just add these numbers together. 9 plus 11 is 20. 9 times 20 is equal to 180. Um, now when I solve for x, subtract 100 from both sides, and we get 10x is equal to 80. Divide both sides by 10, and we get x is 8. Uh, example D here, just like what we did in uh, example C, so use that to help you out. We'd like you to try that one on your own. Uh, all right, and then our last scenario here is the tangent and secant lengths. Um, so that's if we sort of have a combination of a tangent uh, and a secant. And if they share the same endpoint that is outside of a circle, so notice we had one example where it was going on inside, and then now two examples where stuff's going on outside of the circle. Um, so what we can say here, so notice the tangent is all outside. The whole thing is outside. And then the secant is the part that has the outside and the inside. Um, so what we're going to do for that is we're actually going to take a squared is equal to b times b plus c. So this is actually extremely similar to what we did um, in the last one. In fact, it's the same thing. It's still outside part, or it's, yeah, it's still outside part times the whole thing. Um, but if you take a look here, when I take the outside times the whole thing, and then the outside times the whole thing, since the tangent is outside, the outside part would be A, and then the whole thing is, well, it's A again. So A times A gives me A squared. 
So another way to think of this is if you just take the tangent and square the tangent. Uh, and then again, the outside part here is b, the whole thing is b plus c. So it's the same thing as the one that we just did. Um, but it just looks a little bit different because they're not both secants, they're a tangent and a secant. Uh, so this example here, example e, our tangent is 24, our secant is 16 and x. Uh, so let's start with this one here, we'll start with the secant. So it's the outside part, 16 times the whole thing, which is 16 plus x, don't forget to add. And then that equals the outside part times the whole thing. Well, the outside is the whole thing, so that's 24 squared. Uh, and now we just solve for x. So we distribute 16 to everything, giving us 256 plus 16x, and that's going to equal 576. Uh, now we just solve for x here, subtract 256 from both sides, giving us 16x is equal to 320. And then when we divide both sides by 16, we get x is equal to 20. So then example f, I'm actually going to do this one with you, uh, even though I'm sure the video is long enough and you've maybe stopped listening. I don't know. We'll see. Um, the outside or the tangent is actually the variable this time. So we can say x squared, because remember it's tangent squared. So x squared is equal to the outside part, 6 times the whole thing, 6 plus 14 is 20. Uh, so basically we're doing this. Uh, 6 times 20 is 120. So now if I wanted to find the value of x when I square root both sides, uh, we get an answer. So depending on uh, if you wanted to give that as simplest radical form, um, or if you wanted it as a decimal. As a decimal, it comes out to be roughly 10.95-ish, uh, roughly. Uh, whereas if you were doing this thing um, in simplest radical form, what you would do is, let's see, that would be hmm, 4 and 30. I think 2 square root of 30 would be your answer for that in simplest radical form. Alright, so that is it for the video. Thank you for watching.